I do. The whole situation is so confusing. Good plan. Impossible things don't just happen. We'll get to the truth one way or another. Uh, just relax. Even if everyone else suspects Lenny and Lynette, at least we will be supporting them from the stands. Besides, I doubt Farina understands any more about what happens than we do. <laughs> Thanks, Navia. Well, we'll be going then. Best of luck to you. Ah, finally, you're back. Well, how did your investigation go? To be honest, you might be disappointed. No, no. We're already very grateful that you were willing to help. Well, now, don't you all look disappointed. Don't tell me that your investigation came up empty-handed. That was to be expected, of course. The guilty can never produce proof of their innocence. But don't let that stop you. I shall be terribly disappointed should you, my most anticipated foe, concede so easily. Since both parties are present, I declare that the trial regarding the magic show incident is now in session. Firstly, in order for the audience to understand the causes and results of the incident, could we please have Mr. Linney explain the trick? Yes, of course. I will explain while Lynette demonstrates on stage. All the necessary items have been prepared. Thank you, Mr. Linney. In that case, I take your statement to be that you ran to and remained hidden within the magic box in the audience stands once the trick began, and thus could not have committed the crime. Is this correct? Yes, that's correct, Your Honor. In that case, I call upon the prosecution. Lady Farina, do you wish to refute his statement in any way? Why, of course I do. Allow me to take the first shot and break this case wide open. Mr. Linney is clearly lying. There is no way you could have been in the box the whole time if you were to abduct Halsey and murder Cowell. In fact, I'd say you were hardly in that tunnel at all. That is simply your hypothesis based on the presumption that I'm guilty. Oh, is that so? And if I may ask, what did you hear while you were inside your box? The roaring countdown of the crowd, of course. That's how I kept track of the time and built anticipation for the finale. And you didn't hear anything else at all? Nothing that might leave an impression of any kind? No, nothing. I see. But when the count reached 30 seconds or so, there was a thud. One so loud that I believe practically everyone heard it. Huh? Here. Yeah, I'm sure he could have heard a noise that loud from inside the box. I was right by the box and I definitely heard the thud. Look at those scales. Could those mean... <laughs> well then, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to use the words of the magician himself. You never know what can happen in the blink of an eye. Indeed, it seems his alibi can also collapse in the blink of an eye. <laughs> of course, I have armed myself to do far more than smash your alibi. Confidence cannot go unfounded, and my foundations are rock solid. Tell me, aren't you and Lynette actually from the House of the Hearth? No wonder they did something like this. So the serial disappearances were the Fatui's doing. Now it all makes sense. I've got a feeling that what happened on stage probably wasn't just an accident. That's irrelevant. Our identities have nothing to do with what happened. Indeed. Then 
perhaps you could tell us everything that happened during that one minute. Your first priority is to prove yourself innocent after all. I'm sure there is little that needs to be kept secret now. Unless your script already has holes in it. <sighs> the Outlander is speechless. My, oh my, don't they look flabbergasted. <laughs> now comes the infighting in Discord, I suppose. This was almost too easy. Oh, good thing I made all those preparations. Seems the all-nighter I pulled last night is really paying off. <laughs> hey, Linny! Why didn't you tell us this before? Order! Order! Mr. Linny, allow me to re-establish the facts. Lady Farina has raised two points. First, when the thud was heard in the Opera House, you were neither in the box nor the tunnel. Second, you and Ms. Lynette are both members of the House of the Hearth. Are these claims true? Please answer my question, Mr. Linney. I'm sorry. Yes, they're true, Your Honor. I knew it! Well, that's it. We might as well move on to the sentencing already. What should we do now? Granted. In that case, what is your request? Is that really necessary? They're already as good as guilty. The defendant deceived their own attorneys. What is there left to discuss? Order! Order, I say! Your request is reasonable, and we shall adjourn. This trial will reconvene in one hour. You would stick to Mr. Linney's defense even after knowing what you do now? You certainly have more professionalism than I thought. In that case, my dear audience, let's allow the joy of victory to steep for a little while longer. <laughs> Well, this is awkward. I didn't think the Hydro Archon would dig all that up. I'm sorry, Traveler and Paimon. Yeah, sorry. Ugh. Paimon just knew where to start. We trusted you two. We based our entire reasoning on the assumption that you weren't bad guys. Not to set the wrong tone or anything, but Paimon's really mad! I'm... Very sorry. I know you're angry, and reasonably so, but please, let me explain. I know you've clashed with the Vatui several times before. I wouldn't be surprised if just hearing the word is enough to make you upset. But our organization is very, very large, and the Harbingers have very different personalities and goals. Right now, we want to save people, as many as we can. That's right. I'm sure we're on the same page when it comes to this nation and the disaster that its people might face. I knew if it weren't for our respective identities, we could become good friends. That's why I didn't wish to flat out lie to you, but chose to hide some details instead. The truth is very important, but being completely transparent about everything would see us spending more effort than we need to. Right. So, you be the judge. Heck, if I were you, I fear that I'd even struggle to trust me at this point. You met a Fatus who works as a magician, a trickster by trade. All by coincidence, too. But still, I'm asking you to trust me. I am no criminal. 
At least, not in this case. Sorry. Please forgive us. Of course. I'll answer any question you ask. We've been trying to find out how the Oratrice operates. We want to know why it has a consciousness. Why can it deliver sentences accurately? During our investigations, we learned that the machine's core is beneath it. From that moment on, Lynette and I have been designing this box swap trick, with the objective of getting close to the core. Is that why you needed a whole minute? That's right. In truth, the audience would take about 75 seconds to count down from 60, while I would only need 15 to get to the opposite box. So, after jumping into the tunnel, I accessed the Opera House basement via the vent, and went to investigate the room in which the core is stored. That air vent was created during the construction of the tunnel specifically to execute this step. Well, nothing. As soon as I reached that room and was about to investigate, I heard someone's voice. Which should have been impossible, of course. I was quite certain that I was the only one in the room. That voice seemed to recognize me and tried to speak to me. I chose to err on the side of caution and retreated the way I came. On the way back, I saw the broken vase and the clothes on the ground, but the countdown was almost finished, so there wasn't time to give it any thought. After that, the homicide occurred just as you saw. Well, that explains why you didn't hear the thud. Because of that prophecy I told you about, of course. We must know all we can about this nation's secrets in order to deal with that prophesized crisis. That's the only way we can save everyone. So, there you have it. The whole truth. I swear, I didn't hide anything from you this time. It was never my wish to proceed under this cloud of mistrust either. But, like I said earlier, you can be the judge. If you want to leave because you don't trust the Fatui, there's nothing I can do to stop you. Well, Traveler, you decide. Paimon will follow your lead however you choose. Okay, thank you. Thanks for giving us a chance. The current problem is that the scales are tipped pretty badly against you two. If we want to refute the Hydro Archon's accusations, we're gonna need a seriously watertight defense! Huh? Hmm... Oh, Paimon thinks she gets what you mean! Both parties have returned to their positions. Let us continue the trial. When last we left off, Mr. Linney acknowledged the new evidence presented by Lady Farina as fact. Therefore, Lady Farina may continue stating her reconstruction of the events. Ugh, that took long enough. Now then, if everyone would lend me their attention. At this stage, let's revisit that scene from Linney's perspective. began, he entered the tunnel. When the flatbed trolley passed, he opened the box and got into an altercation with Halsey, which caused the loud thud. He did not realize that this sound could be heard by everyone in the opera house, which is why he claimed earlier that he could not hear the sound. Finally, he used the boss to knock her out before making her change clothes to prevent others from recognizing her. At this time, Cowell arrived in the tunnel, having heard that strange noise, and caught Linny red-handed. 
So Linny proceeded to knock him out too before stuffing him into that box. Afterward, Linny passed the unconscious Halsey to his accomplice through the magic box in the audience stands before operating the devices such that Cal's death would be ruled an accident. And there you have it. That's the truth behind what happened. Does the defendant's side have any objections to Lady Farina's description of the events? The key to refuting Lady Farina is the order of events, what Linny experienced, and what he saw. According to Linny, he left via the vent after entering the tunnel. He couldn't have had that altercation with Halsey. Lenny did not take part in the underground altercation. He only witnessed traces of the aftermath. Lenny went to the room that contains the Oratrice's core. This is the actual truth. Ahem! <clears throat> Attention! Ace Detective Paimon has something to say! When the countdown started, Linny did indeed go into the tunnel. But he immediately used a vent to access the Opera House basement, which is where the underground core of the Oratrice is stored. Once he reached that area, he heard a voice in what should have been an empty room. Since he felt something was amiss, he returned immediately. The crime scene had already developed by the time he reached the tunnel again. And in order to complete the magic trick, he did not remain there for any length of time. Finally, he reached the surface, and that was when the accident happened from his point of view. Therefore, he's innocent. give you that. But what proof do you have to back your claims? <laughs> of course I do. If he had been in the magic box the whole time, how could he have not heard that sound? Why do you ask? <laughs> You're saying that he wasn't? Means that when the crime happened, 
happened, Linny had already entered the basement via the vent. The same clue you used to disprove his alibi has now become the best proof! Ha <laughs> ha! How do you like that? <laughs> well played. <laughs> to think you'd use such logic. Well then, if it wasn't Linny who committed the crimes, then who was it? been a third person involved? Is that really a possibility? Halsey is the missing person and an ordinary audience member. Or did she have her own scheme all along? The deceased's name is Cowell, Linny's assistant. He would have been able to tamper with the equipment. What I must do next is recreate the truth. What Cowell did, and how he went from would-be perpetrator to victim. No one entered or left the Opera House through its entrances. So where would the criminal have wanted to take Halsey? The deceased's name is Cowell, Linny's assistant. He would have been able to tamper with the equipment. Halsey's clothing was in the tunnel. So there must have been some fear that she would attract attention. The sound we heard may have come from a clash between the missing Halsey and the criminal. Linny was not in the tunnel at that moment, which gave our criminal ample time. It would have been tough for both people to fit into that vent. They would likely have bumped into Linny as well. figuring things out? <laughs> I see how it is. So this was all just a bluff. And here I thought you had something to show for it. But it seems you're still far from the truth. Look, since we're at a dead end, why not consider a different track? Just like the trick as it transpired, the end result must have been utterly different from the magician's initial design. If only we knew how Halsey disappeared. Well, that would be nice, but the tunnel only has three exits, and none of them seem very likely. And it's not like this is a magic trick where you can just make a real live person disappear. You know, like you did from that water tank, Lynette. <laughs> Excuse my interruption, dear opponents, but do you not see that the crowd is growing impatient? 
There is no greater sin in this opera house than an awkward delay in the performance. If the defense is unable to make further effective arguments, we will move on to the next stage of the trial. Linny was not in the tunnel at that moment, which gave our criminal ample time. The sound we heard may have come from a clash between the missing Halsey and the criminal. The deceased's name is Cowell, Linny's assistant. He would have been able to tamper with the equipment. The vase was not broken by chance. It was used to cover important evidence. The water! from the water tank, vanishing gradually and leaving only clothes behind. If there's a similar method where a person could be transformed into water... <laughs> oh, just a moment, please. I do hope you know how preposterous you sound at the moment. How could a person ever be transformed into water? This is reality we're talking about here, not some magic trick. <sighs> Must we really? I should think that of anyone, your friend Linny already knows this truth very well. Magic tricks are ultimately just illusions and misdirection. But Halsey's disappearance is very real. We're talking about two completely different things! Even so, I trust the Traveler's judgment. The truth must be out there somewhere. Perhaps some new line of reasoning may open if we try to gather all the focal points that don't make sense. Since Cal was the deceased, we haven't placed much attention on him. But given that we aren't making much progress with the case, it wouldn't hurt to have a look at his belongings, would it? People really do come up with all sorts of harebrained schemes when at the end of their rope. The way I see it, your suggestion that we broaden the scope of our investigation is nothing but a tactic for stalling the trial. Nevertheless, I believe that this is a reasonable request on the part of an attorney. Since the trial does indeed appear to be at an impasse, I believe that additional evidence may help us make more progress. Guards! Please step into the lounge and examine the personal effects of the deceased, Cowell. <laughs> 